I'm in the middle of refitting this 54 foot Juno yacht to sail around the world with my wife Hibba and my son Moose. I'm going to show you a few random jobs that I've done over the past few months, like putting some lighting in the boat to make it feel like a spaceship, mandatory, some new navigation lights because the old ones were knackered and corroded, refurbing the windlass and installing new ground tackle, all whilst avoiding getting shot on by three year old boatyard feces. <laughs> this is my experiment, enjoy watching, but don't copy what I'm doing, you might lose a finger or a wife. Cool, so we're going to install some LED strip lights around the boat. We're going to start off by putting them in the handholds that are up here. They're these basic little strip lights that you get from pretty much anywhere, really. Um, red RBG, red, blue, green, and then they make white. This is a five meter piece. Then you get a little control unit. And they also come with one of these, so you can pick like a variety of different colors. And this one actually connects to your phone as well. I think you can actually sync it up with music so it dances around with the music, but politicians have themselves to blame. It's a bit too lively for me. So I'm hooking these up directly to the lights that are already there. Don't try and connect them straight up to a battery or something like that or a ginormous pump because these things will fry immediately. So I'm going to start off by removing all these panels all the way across uh, and then we're going to put the LED lights in there and we've also got some little switches here which I got from Amazon I think these are like a few dollars each and this is set to two amps let's give it a shot cool so I'm just checking between here and the negative there Cool. So I can hook this straight into there. Cool, so I've got the little switch in here. There is my connection to the controller. So I'm just going to run this over here and then um, back up to there. And then that is how I'm going to get my power in here. Cool, so that's them in. <laughs> that actually looks like a Star Trek ship. I love it. So I'm in the skipper's cabin. I'm working on getting these cables pulled through. So I've done the first one. Got a bit of string here that I'm going to use to pull my new wire through, which is a little bit thinner than this wire. This wire is actually really thick. It's a bit of a pain in the arse to actually pull through the, uh, the uh, pull bar, uh, the pull pit, sorry, not the pull bar, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so just attaching them onto here, like that. I'm just doing a couple of wraps around there, taping it up so it's smooth and then I'm pulling them through. And then just got to hope that this thing doesn't snap. I think I might pull two of these strings through just in case. I think that's probably a smart thing to do. So at least if I lose one, I've got another one there. It's like a safety backup. I might do that. I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Right, so I've got these through, which is sweet. That was actually easier than I thought. So I'm now going to attach the string to the end of one of these. So here, and this is the precious part. <laughs> if it's going to fail, it's going to be well I'm pulling this through so these need to be super strong super strong which hopefully they will be so yeah i'm going to do like a bunch of knots on both sides of this wire and then really tape it up so you can see it's quite a bit thinner i think it's three millimeters thinner than the previous one so i've got a bit of play with it well a bit more diameter to mess around with. Mm, that wire doesn't taste nice. Right. Seems pretty tight. I'll put a bit more tape on there. Buy this off. Take 
Right, I've got it about halfway. So I'm gonna push and pull at the same time. It should help get it around the corners. There we go, get that. Nice, very nice. All right, next side. Of course, it just started raining, but I want to get this done. I want to get it finished because I've had a few days of like not being satisfied with my work productivity. So I'm not going to let the rain stop. So this is the unit. It's a Hella Marine. What's it called? I don't know, but it's made in Australia. And you get some little toys inside. So yeah, that's what the unit looks like. So it is watertight. It's got that there. It's got a gap at the bottom. So if any water does come in, it'll it'll drain out. But yeah, I'd rather get all of these little holes seeked up. Cool, gonna get this one on, but I need to take the old one off first. Cool, so I've now got it hooked in down here and I'm just gonna go and test these out. I've got them connected up to here. I don't know if these are the right way around, but I'll find out. This really isn't interesting at all. Let me just go and turn the lights on and see if this works. It's still raining, but I got it done. Look at that. Nice. Right, let's go and test it out. That's anchor. I think it's that one. Back one's on. And check if the front ones are on. Should be. We have light. We have light. Nice. Cool, so we got the anchor down. My battery literally just died as I was doing it. Um, but it's pretty disastrous, I'll show you. So it's down there. Doesn't look that bad down there. But trust me, it's bad. This is the residue that was left. That is what came off it. And if you look down there, that is all the rust. So I don't think that the locker was draining because of the amount of rust that was in there and had come off over a period of time. Everyone else dumps their anchors around. So everyone else dumps their anchors on um, these pallets. So um, they're not sitting in water and then getting oxygen on them when they dry off. Um, and yeah, the previous, well, actually, no, it wasn't the owner. No. So it was the delivery skipper that left it here, but the owner had been back twice. So yeah, previous owner, but doesn't matter because <laughs> I've got a new one coming tomorrow. I'm going to Athens to pick up a um, Rockner anchor and then their chain, which they make, I think it's called Titan chain. And um, so I'm going to the um, I'm going to the port to pick that up from the the distributor importer, whatever, one of those things. So um, yeah, I need to suck up all this shit because I've got to get this locker looking decent for tomorrow because I want to drop the new one in. So I've got my Hoover. I'm going to try and clean this shit up. Right, I've got all that out from down there. I'm going to have to get down and clean it because there's still a load of rust down there. Check this out. This is how much has come off this anchor. I don't know how long it's been there, but... Nah. <laughs> what the hell? It's quite a bit of rust probably make a new anchor chain out of all that <laughs> right clean time cool so come to get the anchor we've got it loaded in so that's the 40 kg rockner and then down there we've got 400 kilos of chain so that's four kilos a meter Just got enough, I don't think this is what Renault made <laughs> made this car for, but we've just got enough space. Hopefully I'll get there. Right, the car is fully loaded. I've got 40 kilo Rockner there, 100 meters of Titan chain in the back. I've got the Jabsco electric toilet. If you want to watch the video on how I install this toilet and refit our head, check out this link here. Yeah, there ain't that much room under, under the wheel arches for this, so I need to be pretty careful driving back. I've now got a two and a half hour drive, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Hopefully I don't break the suspension on this rental car. I don't have the excess insurance policy, so that might kill me. Right, so I picked up the new anchoring chain yesterday, so that's in the car. 
that's ready to go. But first, I want to clean up this. So I'm just going to do a test run, bringing the anchor in and then dropping it back down. But I want to get all this rust out here first, because rust makes rust. So um, I want to get all this cleared out, get this thing properly cleared. Then also, okay, you can see there's a hole there. When they've installed this new windlass, the um, the bolts to actually drop the motor from the gypsy part here at the top um, have been accessible, so they've cut a hole in the back um, so they can access the rear bolts. Problem with that is water gets in through that hole. <laughs> so water basically pools under there, which isn't a massive problem. A bit of it drips into the, uh, into the skipper's cabin, which obviously is an issue after time. But I want to try and keep that area where the windlass is just completely free of water um, the housing for the motor is made of aluminium and they're notorious for rusting like quite easily so i just want to keep that as like moist proof as possible which it would be if it wasn't for that hole so um i'm just going to test it because there is a bit of water intrusion in here i just want to make sure it is the hole and it's not the seal there although i'm tempted to just take this off and reseal it anyway i need to do these gel coat repairs here because they've put like seeker flex in through the old holes which is pretty shit. I mean, it looks terrible. So I need to get that fixed up with some uh, gel coat filler. Right, so it's looking a bit cleaner down there. This panel was there on the bottom. It's like a solid uh, plastic panel, presumably just to lift the um, just to lift the anchor chain up a little bit. But there's that much rust gathered around the sides that water was just pooling above it anyway. <clears throat> so I managed to get this out. I think I'm just going to hose all this because there's so much rust down there. And I can clean this and drop that back in. Dirty, horrible job. <laughs> So this is the rust that was just at the bottom of the anchor locker. That's not including all the shit that actually came off the chain that went down there as well. And the stuff that's still left on. This is pretty heavy. I'm going to empty this out into a bucket so I can take it down. So quick intermission here, people. For those of you who don't know, I've been running a podcast for the last two and a half years called the Ocean Cruisers Podcast. And I've been speaking with some amazing people, some great cruisers, world record holders, some really inspirational storytellers. And I had an idea a while back to try and get all of these great people into one place, get them on loads of boats and basically create the best week on the water ever. So I've teamed up with a company called Navigare, who are one of the best charter companies in the world. And we have a flotilla of 10 massive sailboats which are going to be taking off from the BVIs on December the 9th going through to the 16th it's going to be the best week ever on the water regattas beach parties storytelling socializing it's going to be a great time here's a little clip of it a little promo if you want to find out more go to theoceancruisers.com backslash odyssey cheers Pretty heavy. All right, cool. So now I've got that all cleaned out there. That's the best it's going to look without doing something bizarre to the sides, which I don't really need to do. I've got all the loose rust off. It's good enough for me. So I need to get the windless motor off. Let me take you down here. Right. So this is the windless motor. So you can see the seal is dripping. That's why we've got water in there. I think I might get a rag actually and drain that out first. Um, so yeah, there's two here. You can see the open, it's like a little glass thing at the back. Well, it's plastic actually. I think that'll pop out, there's some silicon on it. And then there's a hole behind that. It's tough to access, but I need to get that off to reseal it and then fill the gel coat in that's underneath as well. So let's give it a shot. <laughs> So 
So I've managed to get this thing off. Um, with a lot of struggle, a lot of WD-40. A lot of messing around. I've had to, I had to take off the, um, I had to take off all this stuff. Stuff that holds the uh, the gypsy in place and all these bits. And I've finally now got a wiggle on it. I can see where the water's coming in. There's just not enough room here. So I need to put a really like thick bead of silicon around there. But before I do that, I want to fill these holes because these look like shit. And they're also absorbing water. Um, so they're letting in holes and they look crap. So I'll get all that cleaned up. All this. Right, so I've got this windlass off after four hours <laughs> of trying to take the thing off. This project took slightly longer than expected. Um, you can see here how it was just seized at a number of places, which was fine. It turns around that way. It's not meant to go up and down. This little thing here is snapped there, which I think has been snapped for a long time because it doesn't look like a clean break on either side. It looks like it's been like that for a while. Now, I just figured out there's actually another chandlery around the corner from here that is a Lofran's supplier and they have boxes and boxes, pallets full of Lofran's windlasses at the front of the shop. So I'm hoping I can take that to them and just say, hey, do you have another one of these? And I'll just stick it straight on. So that's off, that's good. I need to clean this. I need to clean inside there. So I've got some sandpaper just so that thing slots back in a bit easier and then it'll slot out next time I do it because... I imagine I'm going to have to reseal this one probably a few times here and there. Get this uh, seeker out of here, clean all this up and get the gel coat filler on. And touch all this up, make it look pretty, because this was just horrendous. They've done such a shit job on here. Yeah, so next project. Cleaning, sanding, more sanding. And uh, gel coat filler time. I don't know, it's good. it looks like it might rain though, so maybe I'll leave the gel coat filler for... No, no, because I'll need to sand it off, so yeah, I'll have to put the gel coat filler on tonight. So yeah, let's crack on with it. Right, so just checking out the uh, gel coat <clears throat> that I put down yesterday. That's all toughened now and dried. That looks good. Cool, so I've just sanded it down and it looks okay, but I've got the little pinholes in there and a few minor little crap marks. So I think I'm going to do another run just to get this looking a bit better. And then I'm going to get some uh, polish and polish it off and get some uh, different sandpaper down. So I think I'll just do another tiny mix of gel coat to uh, to get this looking a bit better a bit flatter this time i think and then cool so i'm getting all the chain out of the car i need to take some trash out i thought i'd show you what i'm doing this is nearly a thousand pound of chain i think it is a thousand pound of chain new so this is titan 12 millimeter i don't know what that is in inches and this is the old one so literally <laughs> you just see the dust oozing off of it that's as well as like the bucket for the dust that's upstairs nice and new i've got a little bit more to take out so i think that's about 500 pounds and i've got the rest there so get the rest out right here it is old and new <laughs> old look at this piece of shit <laughs> there's a new one so that's a Rockner 40 kg, 88 pounds. Canada Metal, good old Canadians. And this is 100 meters of chain. Lifetime manufacturer's warranty against defects. That's how you know it's the good shit. <laughs> <laughs> 